602 this morning. We're learning more about the victims involved in Sunday's deadly shooting in Wilkes County. 62 year old Sandra Shu was killed and 59 year old Ricky Lee Anderson is in the hospital this morning. The two were shot inside a home on Honey Creek Road on Sunday. Doctors say Lee's injuries have left him unable to function on his own, adding he'll be on a breathing machine for the rest of his life and will need someone to care for him. We spoke with family members of both victims who are struggling to process why this all happened to their loved ones. Even if it was over anything, I mean, well, it's a point killing somebody. Ain't, ain't nothing in this world worth killing anybody over. It really ain't. What was your thought process? Where, where did, what, what did you think would come of it? And why? Because they took a mama away, they took a grandma away, they took a sister away. So we don't get to get her back. Another victim was found shot at the scene and was taken to the hospital, but we don't know yet their identity or status. Authorities arrested these two suspects in the case following a chase. Stacy Miller faces murder charges and James Robinson is charged with aiding and abetting an accessory after the fact. In Yakin County this morning, investigators have identified a body found late last month. They say it's that of 50 year old Jason McCraw. His death is now being investigated as a homicide. McCraw's body was found in a wooded area in the Lone Hickory community that was back on June 29th. A grand jury has indicted a man for shooting a Kernersville police officer last year. Quinton Blocker has been formally charged with attempted first degree murder, assault with a deadly weapon with intent to kill and assault with a firearm on a law enforcement officer. He's accused of shooting former officer Sean Hull in February of 2021, seriously injuring him. Who was shot in the face, arm and hand with his own gun, which Blocker is also accused of stealing. Cool and his canine retired at the end of last year. Over in Thomasville, police are still investigating a shooting that sent one person to the hospital. Authorities say they found the victim on Jared Street yesterday afternoon. No word on their condition or suspects at this hour. In Greensboro, police are searching for this person in connection with the homicide case from earlier this year. Police believe this person may have been involved in the death of 79 year old Charles Morton. He was shot back in January on Twain Road. He died earlier this month and now authorities are offering a reward of up to five thousand dollars for any information in this case. If you know anything by chance, call Greensboro police right away. New this morning at 604, Winston-Salem police are searching for suspects in a business robbery overnight. Police say just after two o'clock this morning, a man robbed the Parker's stop and shop on Reesville Road with a rifle. Thankfully, no injuries were reported. Elsewhere this morning in Winston-Salem, a local church is asking for your help finding a stolen van. The pastor of Lexwin Baptist Church tells us someone broke into the church last Thursday night after staff left for the day. Well, the pastor says that person took $700 worth of food and found keys to the now stolen van. Uh, just making people aware of what's going on in the community and uh, then, uh, you know, trying to get them to look after us while we in turn look out for them. It's looking after one another. It's loving each other's neighbor. And here's another close look at that stolen van. If you see it on the roads by chance this morning, contact Winston-Salem Police right away. Two furniture manufacturing plants in the triad are closing up, leaving nearly 300 people without a job. Mississippi based United Furniture Industries is ending operations at their plants in Winston Salem and High Point. Our news gathering partners at the High Point Enterprise reports the Winston Salem plant will close July 29th, nine days from today. Production at the High Point location is slated to end at the end of August. At 606 this morning, let's go to Washington. New numbers show wages for employees rose compared to the same time last year. Meanwhile, lawmakers are working to push forward two bills which they say will offset the cost of inflation. Amy Liu is in our Washington Bureau with more on how inflation is impacting your wallet. Experts say although wages rose by 5.2%, the highest in 20 years, it's not keeping up with inflation, which is sitting at 8.6%, meaning you could be taking not a pay raise, but a pay cut. Even though we are seeing these wage increases, they're not translating into people feeling like they have more money in their pocketbook. It's less bang for your buck, according to business professor Chris Kays. A new federal report showed median wages rose to a little over $1,000, falling short of rising costs. Especially if you're one of the 64%, I think, of Americans that live paycheck to paycheck. 
you know, this is where it really hurts folks like that because they just don't have the flexibility to pay for these higher prices. On Capitol Hill, lawmakers are working on bills Democrats say will lower costs. One will invest in making more computer parts in the U.S. It is going to lower costs. It is going to bring jobs home. The other, a Democrat-only bill with backing from the White House, is stalled until all Democrats agree on its scope. Republicans argue more spending on health care and climate will keep prices up. The answer from Washington Democrats is alarming, but not surprising. After spending us into inflation, they now want to tax us into recession. And speaking on that tech bill, a preliminary vote yesterday showed that 16 Senate Republicans and all Democrats were on board with the bill. The bill would increase semiconductor manufacturing in the U.S., which could help supply chain issues and ultimately prices. In Washington, I'm Amy Liu. Amy, thank you. Vice President Kamala Harris will be traveling to the Tar Heel State, Tar Heel State this week. According to her office, she'll be in Charlotte tomorrow discussing the White House's investment in high-speed Internet. She's also scheduled to meet with state leaders and legislators to talk about protecting reproductive rights. North Carolina Congresswoman Alma Adams is free this morning after posting bail. She was arrested yesterday while protesting for abortion rights at the Supreme Court. She was taking part in this reproductive freedom and abortion rights demonstration with the Democratic Women's Caucus. Capitol Police say the group was blocking traffic, which is against the law. Officers say they gave three warnings out. They did arrest 34 people in all. Adams is from High Point and represents North Carolina's 12th congressional district, which is made up of parts of Mecklenburg and Cabarrus counties. Democrats across the country are campaigning on the abortion issue for the 2022 elections. The Defend Choice Week of Action stopped by in Greensboro yesterday. North Carolina's Democratic Party says it wants to engage supporters and mobilize voters ahead of the November elections. Republican leaders are trying to reinstate a 20 week abortion ban in North Carolina and promise is to look at further legislation in January. Plans are moving forward this morning for a facility to house hundreds of migrant children in Greensboro. They'll be staying in the former American Hebrew Academy, which has been closed since 2019. Just yesterday, city and Guilford County leaders met with the United States Department of Health and Human Services to discuss those plans, and Guilford County Commissioner Skip Alston says that facility will not be opening anytime soon. It's now slated for the end of this year. That facility will host 800 unaccompanied minors for a two to three week stay until they can reunite with family or find sponsors. Alston said the kids will not be able to go on and off the property and they will all be vetted by ICE. I didn't see any real serious concerns. This is not their first rodeo, so to speak. They have 200 uh, facilities uh, like this uh, across 22 different states. Uh, so they've done this before. Austin says the children who will, be, who will be housed there will be between the ages of 13 and 17. All right, your time now is 610. In case you have a Mega Millions ticket at home this morning, we want to <laughs> let you know there were no winners in yesterday's drawing. Uh, yikes, that means the jackpot now rises to $630 wow. million. There were four lucky people who drew the first five numbers. Audrey, Christine, Devante, Jacqueline. We wouldn't be here right now. Well, that's a different story. <laughs> they all each gets $1 million apiece. According to the Mega Millions website, website. The $630 million prize is the fifth largest ever offered. And if someone wins at that level, it will be the biggest jackpot since the more more than $1 billion prize that was handed out in Michigan back in 2021. Okay, and no one has been able to match all the numbers since April 15th when someone from Tennessee won more than $20 million. So the next drawing will take place this Friday night.